We're going back to back with Buckeyes in the Bash Mania podcast this week as 2020 Big Ten champ Luke Pletcher stops by. Luke has an incredible career already, being a two time All American, a Big Ten champion, three time Big Ten finalist. He's a three time Pennsylvania state champion. Luke Pletcher knows wrestling. He's pretty dang good at it. Before we dive into the conversation, if you haven't subscribed to the podcast, this is the wrestling podcast where you get to hear the stories of the absolute best wrestlers in the USA. So be sure to subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, wherever you listen to podcasts. Podcast. All right, let's roll the intro. It's Bashomania! Let me tell you something, brother. He gave us everything he had in him tonight. What you gonna do when Bashomania runs wild? Oh, it's gonna be a good one. And business just picked up here on the podcast. Oh, yeah. All right. We are here with Luke Pletcher. How are you, Luke? I'm doing good. Doing good. How about you? I'm doing good, man. We're just kind of talking that this quarantine is, has definitely thrown things for a loop, but definitely making the most out of it. Thankfully, in a company where, because we are digital, there there's a lot going on. So it's been interesting. But people aren't tuning in right now to hear from me. They, they want to hear from you. You're obviously relevant right now for, for a lot of reasons. And before we start talking about some of the relevant things, I want to go back. Tell me a little bit about how you got started in wrestling. Uh, I started wrestling when I was five, I think, five or six. Um, yeah, at th- that time I was just playing a sport, whatever season it was. So I played football, baseball, and wrestling growing up. Yep. And we just, I just always did something. And wrestling was the one, you know, that was in season and during that time. So. And when that's, did you start realizing you were good? Like, I mean, you were a three-time Pennsylvania State champion. Like, how quickly did that evolve to where you were getting better and better to to have such success early on? I think it was probably around thirteen. I stopped. I stopped playing football when I was about, I was ten or eleven, just because I was small and you know, I just <laughs> well, it wasn't for me. I was just getting you know rolling my ankles and stuff. Yeah. But I played baseball until I was about fourteen, and I stopped. I think I was 14, maybe 15. If I stopped playing baseball, I just put all my time into wrestling. You know, I was I was becoming pretty successful in that, and I just felt like that was that would that would set me up the best for the future. Yeah. And, and I know you've talked a lot in interviews over the years about mindset, and I'm curious about that. Like, you know, looking through your career before we hopped on this, you were a four-time finalist in Pennsylvania State Championships. And you had a loss your sophomore year. And I'm curious what your mindset was after you went as a freshman. I And I got to believe the expectation is that, okay, I'm going to be a four-time state champion. What was your mindset and perspective after losing your sophomore year? Well, I actually lost my junior year. I oh, won was my it sophomore junior? Year. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But the um, there's there wasn't much that changed, really. Um, I think the biggest thing was just knowing that, I did. I was try. I just did, tried to do everything I possibly could to, to win. Yeah. So I don't. I don't know what what made me start thinking like that. But a lot of it was just like how how I was raised. If you know, if I work hard and do all the right things and try to lead the right life, then at the end of the day, I was you know I was okay with what happened. You know, obviously I wanted to win. I was trying sure. my best, but yeah. but I was able to you know you know just take it and move on with it in a way. And how do you balance those highs, highs and lows? You know, like wrestling, such a such an all in sport where you put everything you have and you see in celebrations. I mean, I'm a Penn State guy, so I wasn't too much of a fan of the I'm number one after Big Tens. But you can <laughs> see the emotion, right? Like you can see how hard wrestlers work and, and win or lose. I, I think a lot of you top level guys do such a great job of controlling your emotions and i'm curious if that started early in high school where it's like i've talked to some guys who get really depressed after a loss and they have to work through it and then kind of get back to a place of okay wins and losses don't define me okay i can come back and win next year whatever the case may be did you kind of develop that early on where where you didn't get too caught up in a loss like that yeah definitely to it to a certain extent though because Early on, it was just about losing in like a respectful way. Yeah. So, you know, my dad was, you know, he's big. His, his big saying was win like a champion, lose like a champion. Yeah. You know, and when you're younger, you, you 
you know, you cry and you do all that <laughs> stuff. And you, I figured out pretty quick that, you know, my dad wasn't going to put up with that. Um, so, so that was the, it first, yep. that's how I started like coping with losing, just, you know, being able to lose, be okay, figure out what you did wrong and then move on. But I think the biggest change was just, which a lot of this come from being at Ohio state with Turvell and he's, I don't know if you've talked to him or not, but he, not he's big in, he's big into like this mindset and how, how to look at the sport yep. and just looking at wrestling in a, not a win loss perspective, like yep. the matches in general. So it's more of just continuing to build and try and become the best, you know, best version of yourself in wrestling that changes the way you look at wins and losses. So if you're doing the right things, and it doesn't it doesn't work, but maybe you, maybe you're getting better in the process. Then then that's the best way to look at it. And, and Travell, you know, it's, it's funny you bring him up because everybody I talk to from Ohio State brings him up. Whether it's a recent guy, whether it's a guy like um, Reese, whoever it might be, Joey McKenna, everybody brings him up. You know, I'm curious when, when you were being recruited and, and going there, was that a big part of what led you to Ohio State? <clears throat> To be honest with you, whenever I was getting recruited, he was still competing, yeah. I think. You know, so yep. even on my visit, he wasn't a coach yet. Yep. So he didn't really have a big big part in it at all because you know, I just didn't didn't really know too much about sure. him. I, I knew I knew him from wrestling. I knew he was you know, he was our rep and yeah, I watched him watched him compete, but I never heard anything other than that. Um but I mean I've watched you know, I'm bit, I watched like the flow film while he was doing magic and he seemed funny yeah. and cool and easy to hang out with, but not, he didn't really play too much of a decision, but it was, it was definitely a big add. And what, what did lead you to Ohio state? The biggest, I think the biggest thing was, you know, obviously there's a lot that goes into making that decision, but yeah. the biggest thing I think was I didn't, I wanted to go somewhere where they, where they did what I was trying to do. So trying to, I was trying to win a national title yep. and you know, the partners there and the people in the room have done it. Yep. So that, you know, the being, being able to be surrounded by those kind of guys, the team, when I went there, it wasn't, it was just, there was something whenever we, they went to practice, it wasn't like a job to them. Yep. You know, everybody seemed happy to be there. There no one who was like, Oh, it's time for practice, blah, blah, blah. And it was just, it was just a good feeling. And, a lot of that with the coaches, everything, it was just perfect for me. And, you know, going back to an interview I watched from 2017, I believe, you said that <clears throat> one of the biggest changes year over year for you is mindset. And I'm curious if that's something where, you know, we've already talked about it a little bit, but I'm curious. I feel like so many times after somebody has a noticeable improvement, like a lot of people bring up your like a light switch flip from your junior to senior year. And after talking to a lot of you guys, I've realized it's not necessarily that a light flip switched. It's that certain things just happen where you see it. And I know that you've talked before about your mindset and how important that was. And I'm curious if, was that just something you carried on? Like you were saying, like your dad taught you like win like a champion, lose like a champion, and you kind of learned early on how important mindset was. Was that, that something you just carried on or was that something that you grew as you matured as an athlete and as you matured growing up? Did you focus more and more on, on knowing how important mindset was so trying to develop an even stronger and stronger mindset? Yeah, 100%. Because there's just for, – for a while, it's just like, oh, I'm just going to wrestle and there's I'm going to do the best I can. I'm going to practice yeah. as hard as I can. But eventually, you know, everybody's doing that. Yeah. So dude, there's got to be something that differentiates you from from everybody else. And the thing I think that made, you know, a lot of people, you know, I've, I've been asked this question quite a few times about like what's changed. Yeah. But I, th I think the biggest difference would probably be, would be like a sense of arrogance in a way. Sure. Um, and I don't like, I don't want to like come off as, you know, arrogant at all. But when I'm wrestling, it has, you know, I have to have a sense of con like a bigger sense of confidence yeah. that, I, that I'm better than everybody. And I, they don't, you, you know, have to in believe my head, you I can win. Of course. Yeah. Like I always believed that I win, I could win, but I needed to believe that there was no way that they could win. Yep. So, and, it, and that just helped open up my style. You know, I always in the practice room, I feel like I've always been 
you know, that type of wrestler. But when it was time to compete, for some reason, I would just, you know, I'd shell up a little bit. So that's interesting. And, and like heading into college, when you head to a school like Ohio State, like I never went to college. I went to a local community college for one month and I kind of backed off and, and got back in, into the website thing. And thank God my career kind of took off. But when you head into a school like Ohio State, where you are around guys who are winning national championships and it's, it's a different level than a state championship. It's, it's harder to do it. The talent pool gets smaller, but, but better. <clears throat> what was your expectation after winning three state championships being in four state championship finals? Like what was your expectation for, for yourself and, a, and, and, and kind of in line with mindset, how did you manage those expectations throughout college? The expectations were to go in and, you know, win right away. Um, I felt initially I was going to go and start right away at 133. That was the plan. Yeah. Um, but Nate Tomasello, you know, he, he got bigger and he wanted to, he wanted to go up and I decided to red shirt and then Keyshawn got hurt and I ended up wrestling 41 my true freshman year. But the, the, you know, the, my mindset was I, I can win and I've always believed that I could win. So whenever, you know, things got tough. It was like, okay, I got to reevaluate what, what I'm doing and sure. what I need to fix. So obviously I was realistic and, you know, I kept it in perspective, but I knew, you know, that, that deep down that, that that's what I wanted to be doing. I didn't want to be out there taking right. fourth place. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, kind of in line with that, it's funny as I, as I was, Anytime before anybody comes on this show, I, I really do a deep dive and try to get as much info I can to try to pull as much out to provide you know a lot of value. There's a lot of young wrestlers I know that listen to this. And I'm curious, it's interesting. On Ohio State's website, under your, your resume, your bio, whatever you want to call it, it, it says your sophomore year you grinded out 17 victories by three points or less. And I thought that's an interesting stat because you don't see that too often. Like I've never, I've never seen it put like that. I've never seen that stat or, or worded like that. What do you think the difference is if someone is to say, I want to get better and I need to win those close matches? What do you think it was that helped you develop to be able to grind that out? Was it that belief that, hey, my opponent can't beat me? Or what was it that allowed you to do that? I think it came from just the amount of matches that I've wrestled in my life. Sure. I mean, whenever I was younger, you know, if you look when from the time I was eight to 15, I mean, basically any big name from Pennsylvania, we were wrestling every yeah. weekend. So I think just being in those matches all the time, like there's no, like, it's just like an emotional control. I think I was able to control yeah. my emotions and not get too high and just be able to continue to, you know, compete in, in a high, in a high level. So did you have I would to say that work was probably on that, the biggest. controlling your emotions? I feel like for me, like I know early on with business, I had to do that. Like I couldn't get too pissed at a client. I couldn't, if someone mm -hmm. didn't sign with us, I couldn't get too mad. Like, did you have to work on that? Or was that just something pretty natural going back to, again, you know, things your dad taught you? It, I, I feel like it has been pretty natural for me, but you know, we've, in Ohio State, we had a, it's like a, it's like a leadership kind of me, meeting, yeah. but it's like a, you know, like a camaraderie type thing where like there is like little things we talk about to, you know, like pl plug some things in your head sure. whenever things get difficult, you know, just like some one liners to say that, you know, that'll reset you and get you, get you thinking the right way. So I think, I think that it's, it was always there for me, but it got, you know, strengthened in, in ways that I could control it a little bit better. And I'm curious, like, and this is the last time I'll, I'll bring up the flipping a switch concept, because I know so many people ask you that, and I don't want to be redundant, mm -hmm. but the only other thing I'm curious about it, you know, again, when, when people say you flip the switch, I, I don't always know that it's flipping a switch. It's that sometimes you see the fruits of your labor more in, in one season than another, and not even just a season in wrestling, like in life. I know mm -hmm. for me in business, there's times that I can do everything right for two weeks straight. And sometimes you just go in a funk and nothing happens. And then there's days mm -hmm. I'm like, whatever. I'm sitting on my couch and work falls into my lap, right? Like there's ebbs and flows. And I'm curious if that was what your career has been like with the ebbs and flows of sometimes you see the fruits of your labor more. And then it's almost like, yeah, some people can say a light switch flipped your senior year. You were dominant. But I feel like 
sometimes for somebody like yourself who has wrestled for so long with so many high level matches, did you feel at all like it was just your, the fruits of your labor were being shown more or did it feel different? I think it's a little bit of, of all of it. Sure. Um, I definitely was able to flip something in my head with just the way that I thought and the way that I yep. wanted to compete. But I felt like I've always been that kind of wrestler in, in practice. Yep. And for whatever reason, I don't know what it was, but I was, you know, for a while I was content with winning, just yep. winning. And there was, you know, if I won by two points and that was fine by me. Yeah. Um, so I think just being able to put my, you know, put my foot down and actually want to dominate a little bit more than just winning yep. and put it, wanting to put that out, change my mindset. And, you know, obviously I feel, I feel like I just got a lot better in the, in yep. this last nine months. Sure. I was able to, you know, figure some things out. And, you know, and just so you said, there's ebbs and flows, you know, in practice, there was a point in the season where I wasn't feeling, you know, crisp. I was, you know, I was giving up things that I don't think I should have been. And, sure. you know, obviously it's practice, but I was trying new things, but there was, I just felt off for a couple of weeks and I was able to, you know, get out of that funk in matches. Yeah. But for the most part, I think it's just a combination of everything. And, you know, you talk about like the last nine months, how much you feel you've improved, and, you know, I got to ask, like, what did it feel like when I, I and I'm not going to ask what your reaction was to NCAA is being canceled. I, I think everybody's kind of had the same story of you were in practice, your coaches came up to you. But mm -hmm. what did it mean to you as you started to dissect it? Right. Like here you were the number one seed going to NCAA's your senior year. There's really only a handful of you guys like you and, and Colin who, man, many were saying like this was your this was your send off. Right. How did you how did you cope with all that? It was tough. It was definitely tough. You know, it'd be, you know, I, I could say that you know, it was everything is okay and just move sure. on from. It, but it was definitely it was definitely tough. Yep. Um, you know, you had to I had to figure out some way to deal with it. Yeah. Uh, for me, it was just you know I wanted to you know I spent a couple of days in Columbus afterwards and we hung out like the team just hung out got together and for it for the first week or so just was kind of numb, you know, it doesn't, yeah. didn't feel, didn't feel like uh, it's over, but I just wanted to get back, you know, to my family and start figuring out, you know, is there going to be another year whenever we realized that that wasn't going to ha be happening pretty quickly. Yeah. I talked to coach Ryan and almost every day there for a while. And just, you know, we kind of saw that that wasn't going to happen. Yeah. So at that point I was kind of just making a decision, trying to figure out what was best for me. And and is that a thing? There were once I think it was either last week or the week before, and last Monday I think the NCAA came out and said, "Yeah, we're not giving winter athletes another year of eligibility." Was it like, okay, that's final, or was there any more like, maybe we can do this, or maybe we can do that, or did you just pretty much let go and say that's it? I kind of let go and said, yeah. you know, that's it. I don't know, you know, I kind of knew going. Be I felt like I knew going into that decision, yeah. and I knew what the decision was. I yep. knew I felt like, you know, a week or two before that, I knew there's there was no way um, it would have been great. And I would have taken the year in a heartbeat for sure. Yeah. But I don't I just didn't see it happening. But I, w I was making plans for whatever happened. Yeah. You know, if, if we got a year, I was going to go back. If not, I was going to continue to look whatever was best for me. And, and similarly to NCAA's being canceled, you know, I, I know you've said that part of your plan was to win the NCAA's qualify for the Olympic trials and then challenge for the Olympic spot. How did that change your plans now? Where is, is your plan still the same? Cause I know initially it's like, okay, NCAAs are canceled. Now you go to last chance. Well, now there is no last chance, right now. It's mm -hmm. like, we don't know what's going to happen next year, but when it came to terms of that, what perspective did your mind kind of take on, on wrestling right now as training? Like I know you just took the job in, at, as a volunteer coach at Pitt and you're going to be training at the PWC. What's your mentality with that moving forward? Right now, there's not much to do yeah. for me. Um, you know, I'm lifting and I'm jogging, but there's no, no place really for me to work out. I'm, you know, I'm in search of finding a little strip of mat. I can roll out my yard and wrestle with my brother, but <laughs> Right. I'm thinking about just raking up the yard and get the rocks out and we'll just roll on the grass. <laughs> but uh, for right now, it's just just focusing on what I can kind of let, you know, using this time to heal my body um, 
four years of college will give you some nice bumps and bruises. But so this is kind of a kind of a time to you know reset. You know, I'm, I'm missing wrestling a lot. Wish I could do it. But that's basically, you know, all I'm up to trying to trying to just figure out, look for apartments now. And that's what I'm doing. Yeah. And it's nuts because it's such a especially with the Olympic trials, the Olympics. It was such wrestling was coming to such a climax climax that didn't get to happen. Like yeah. it was NCAAs. It was last chance. If you had to go yeah. it was the Olympic trials like and now guys are itching so bad to to compete, and it's like, okay, we can't compete right now. Yeah. And, and I guess there's there's always a blessing in, to a degree, having something taken away, and you develop even more of an appreciation for it. And I'm curious if you've had time, and, and maybe you haven't really thought of it too much yet, but I'm curious if you've reflected on your time at Ohio State and what you think some of your key takeaways were from your time there. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's a lot been a lot of time to think you know, of what, you know, all the good things, Yeah. Um, you know, just, I just, you know, it's just, just really just grateful basically for, for everything that I've been able to do there. I've got nothing but love for Ohio state. They, um, you know, they've believed in me since, since day one and they put a lot of effort into me. And, you know, also I just, I'm just thankful for my coaches and my teammates and just everybody involved. It's just been nothing short of fantastic. And I know now, you're you moved back home to PA. You're going to be training at the PWC. You're going to be a volunteer coach at Pitt. What kind of went into that decision and, and heading back home to PA? <clears throat> the there's a lot of things. Um, I want to. I'm gonna still compete. Yeah. But I feel like at a certain at a certain at a certain time, I had to start looking for what was best for my future after I'm done yep. wrestling. You know, so. I want to be a coach and I felt like coming home and, you know, starting some coaching responsibilities where I'm comfortable at. You know, I know, I know the coaches on the staff at Pitt, um, they're all good guys and I know some guys on the team already. So I think just being able to come back, I have a lot of connections here um, and just get my feet wet a little bit and figure out, you know, is this really, is this really for me? I, I'll be able to, you know, I think dive, you know, dive head first and, just, you know, start my coaching career. And how much have you thought out of that? Like how far in advance have you, are you looking at six months, a year, five years? Like how much right now has got to be such a unique time, not only because of what's been going on the last month, but you're also young and, and it's like, you don't have everything figured out right now. Have you given too much thought as to like, I don't want to say even a five-year plan, but diving into coaching and, and still competing, like have you given it much thought where you want to be long-term and do long-term? Is it just right now I think the best place for me is to be in PA? A little bit of both. I mean, obviously right now I think the best the best place is for me to be back home yep. or close to home. I mean, Pittsburgh's not home, but yeah. it's, you know, it's like an hour away. Yeah. So I think that's the best place. And I still, you know, I'm still going to go, I'm going to train as hard as I possibly can and put all my effort into training. But, you know, I think, you know, I'm going to go a quad for um, in the wrestling side and then, you know, figure out, you know, just, I'm going to stay, you know, stay open to everything. But, you know, I feel like Pitt's a good opportunity for me to, you know, get everything I possibly, everything I need. You know, it's offering me everything. And you'll be able to beat up on Nico a little bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited for that. We wrestled, with, I think, two years ago in the summer I went to his house. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, he's got a he's got a little wrestling room in his place. A little wrestling room uh, is an understatement for what he has. He's got a full blown yeah. gym in that place. He's got a full gym. <laughs> so yeah, that'll be that'll be fun. Yeah, for sure. And and last thing here before I let you go, I'm curious if you've had so many so many high level matches. What do you think one of your favorite and you can say a couple if you want, you don't have to limit it down to one, but what would you say one of your absolute favorite matches thus far has been? Absolute favorite. There's a little, probably a little recency bias, but I would say the my first match at Cavelli, the new our new arena. Yep. Uh, where I had Real Woods. Yeah. And I kind of scrambled my way out of it, you know, a takedown. Yep. Um, yeah, that one's that one's up there. Uh, the Big Ten final was up there. All right, let's leave that um, one alone. <laughs> yeah, I, just, I had to throw it in. I had to throw it in. <laughs> I don't blame you, man. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that one. Mm, it's 
trying to think. Hmm. One that, you know. Do you think against... back of any of your young, like high school matches? Like recency bias is such a real thing. Like, yeah, do you true. think of those moments of like at Ohio State, at the Big Tens? Like, you think of those matches, but like, do you still think, like, Especially as you're you're emotionally developing so much through high school, like you said, like I remember, dude, I sucked, sucked in middle school and high school. I remember like balling, losing some tournament that meant nothing, right? And I remember being so excited over winning a tournament that meant nothing. Do, mm-hmm. do you remember any of those matches? Like even you were wrestled who Chad Red and who's number one too. Like yeah, you've kind of, you've wrestled all over the place. Yeah, I would say probably two of my favorite from high school were losses. Um, really, Chad why? Red. They were just fun. I don't okay. know. They were, they were wild. Just the crowd was into it. You know, Chad Red was a fun one, yeah. even though I lost. That was fun. Um, the, just the, all the who's number one matches were fun. Uh, just, you know, you felt like you were you were a big shot there. They, they treated us pretty <laughs> well. So that was that was a lot of fun. And then the state final that I lost was pretty cool, actually. Uh, obviously, it stunk, but it our match went into, like, ultimate ride out, so – the, the whole giant setter was done wrestling, but it was just me and AC Headley. That's and we got, cool. into, we got like a crazy scramble and the crowd was cheering and stuff. So it was pretty cool. That one was a fun one. Did you think fun. it was cool right after? Or did it take you time to kind of process the loss I, and then say, yeah, that was pretty cool. I knew it like inside, like really? in the middle of the match, I, like we got into a crazy scramble in, in overtime and nobody scored. And like, there was like a standing ovation while we were waiting to like line up for, <laughs> Like to get in referee's position. Yeah. I was like, dang, this is sweet. Um, <laughs> well, maybe that's why I lost. My emotional control wasn't good enough yet. But, yeah, but, 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 it, but it's still t- that self-awareness to be able to, to say that it, it's bigger than just a win or loss, especially at that age. Like you, you yeah. hear different guys that talk about like, I remember, I don't know if it was Burroughs or Askren. Somebody said something like, listen, calm down. Nobody's recruiting 11 year old you you know what i mean like mm-hmm. and i i think it's almost emotional maturity to kind of appreciate it and not just say i feel like some people myself like i would have thought it was cool but i would have been so hung up on just the win or the loss i wouldn't even been able to appreciate that and as cliche mm-hmm. as the the saying is of appreciate the journey not the destination that's the journey yeah. that's key moments that you you have to appreciate yeah absolutely i think yeah that's that's it's tough to like, you can't really teach it either yeah. Because eventually they're going to, you're, someone's going to have to figure it out on their own. Yeah. You know, I was, you know, I was told for three years at Ohio state that, you know, figure, you know, you got to not weigh the wins and losses yeah. and only focus on, you know, the progression of how, how your wrestling is growing. And it took me forever to really grasp it. I wanted to win and obviously I was okay. You know, I could lose and not get bent out of shape, but, I wanted to win. What do you think helped you grasp it? I, I don't know. I really don't. I think, you know, maybe being my last year, yep. you know, maybe that helped. Um, just, I, I wish I knew. If I yeah. knew, I, I'd be able to, you know, I'd be able to help some more people with it. But I, eventually, I think it just, you hear it so many times and eventually it clicks. Well, it's funny, as you were talking, that's one of the things I was thinking about was just the repetition. Because I'm always curious for a high-level athlete, it takes so much self-awareness. It's it's constant, whether it's trusting your coaches, trusting your family, trusting your friends, trusting the process. And it's so easy to get hung up on a win or loss. For me, I don't understand it. I've never been a high-level athlete, but on the business side, I've learned you have to let go pretty good. And I like taking the losses because I think you grow from them. And again, it's cliche, but it, it's the truth. Mm-hmm. Like you said, those matches in high school that you lost, like were two of your fun matches you've ever been in. And I'm sure not only that appreciation, but being that environment, like that, that's yeah. training grounds. That's, that's huge. Yeah. I mean, it's just, I think the most is just like pressure situations. Yep. You know, the more you put yourself under the duress or, you know, the stress of competing, the less big it seems in your head. Yep. You know, so the, the smaller or the less important you can make it, I think the better, the better you're going to compete or the better you're going to think or whatever, whatever you think, whatever the, you know, scenario might be. Yeah, I heard a saying that was like, the more you, the more voluntary, the more voluntary suffering you endure, 
the less you'll have to involuntarily endure. I, I'm butchering it completely. Chosen but suffering? Yeah, yeah. That's a Tom Ryan special. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's, and I've heard it said so many different ways. I, that's right. I know he said it a couple of times. Like, man, if you if you choose that. That and not even that you're choosing it, but I think sometimes it's choosing to endure it and not look at it as a negative. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's you know that's not just matches. It's got to be practice, yeah. Yeah. just life. There's a lot of things that go into it. So the the as many times as you can choose to suffer, as Coach Ryan would say, right? You know, the, the the better your outcomes will be in a lot of areas. Yeah, I, I've learned that the hard way in business, but it's definitely true. And- Mm-hmm. and everything sweet man well listen i i'm gonna let you go here i appreciate you taking a few minutes and stopping by anything else you you got for us no that's about all i got i uh, appreciate you having me on it was fun sure um, man yeah and and all let me got. know i'm i might have to come come to the pwc and and watch some of these nico beat-ups <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'm not saying a word you're saying these, those will. are your words oh yeah, yeah they're those mine words. <laughs> nico yeah. if you're listening these are my words <laughs> i own them <laughs> all right cool man Sorry. i'll talk soon thank you again for stopping uh, by yeah See ya. Thanks. and that is it for today's episode thank you so much for tuning in i hope you enjoyed this episode if you did shoot me a message dm me email me leave a message on the website Leave a five-star rating review on Apple Podcasts or Facebook, wherever you can. It all helps. So be sure to subscribe, and I'll be back with another episode shortly. And the beat goes on, goes on, goes on.